Wisdom, c'est lui qui est le modérateur de... en ligne. Wisdom, donc. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, please. Is Ça ne soit pas, donc peut-être. Allo, allo, can you please take your seat? We are late in starting our next meeting. No, no, no. Please take. Yeah, Please, please, please take your seat. No. You say? Il faut les voir. Hello, 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 Tess. Hello. Hello. I had a book of Quran. Do we have wisdom, our remote moderator, around here? Where is wisdom? Uh, the panel should leave the room, the last one. Hello, hello, hello. Aisha, please. can you take the moderation and till, till wisdom comes? Online moderation. Till wisdom comes. Modération à ligne pour voir ceux qui posent des questions. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are going to start the African IGF Open Forum, uh, which uh, will be moderated by uh, Ms. Christine Areda. Christine is the Executive Director of Telecom Services and Planning at the National Telecom Regulatory Agency of Egypt. She is the chairperson of the African IGF because the last African IGF was held in uh, Sharm el Sheikh with the support of uh, her organization. She has been working for uh, over 25 years in areas of internet development and she is well known in the IIG arena around the world. Christine, you have the floor. Thank you very much, McCain, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, coming uh, today. It uh, shows indeed uh, the interest uh, in Africa uh, for the African IGF, and uh, so we're very happy today. So um, we are going to have um, a great panel, I hope, today. Um, I have great colleagues uh, on my right and on my left. Uh, we are going to present on the various uh, activities uh, in the region, I'm going to present each uh, one of them um, at his uh, um, uh, turn. And then we're going to make sure to have at least, we started a bit late, but at least um, 
maybe 20 minutes of uh, questions and answers, or maybe a bit less as time goes on. So um, um, I maybe, I, maybe I will start right away uh, with uh, the presentation um, on, um, on the African uh, Internet Governance uh, Forum, the sixth African Internet Governance Forum, which took place uh, just um, um, two weeks ago in uh, Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt. Uh, so um, it was uh, organized uh, uh, by the uh, African, uh, by the AUC, and it was uh, hosted by NTRA Egypt. Um, Next, please. Uh, as a fact, it wasn't just... Uh, uh, one event, it was a cluster of events, uh, which was so enriching to all participants because they could, uh, some of them, uh, uh, come earlier and attend. So we had, uh, at start, uh, the African School on Internet Governance, AFRI-SIG, uh, which was from uh, November 28th to the 2nd of December. And um, uh, I'm not sure if we have Henriette here, uh, but uh, they had uh, 30 youngsters from Africa who engaged in a very vivid discussion um, all through those days. Uh, after that, we launched North uh, African IGF for two days. We had those meetings for the very first uh, meeting uh, of the annual meeting of the North African, and uh, my colleague Greta is going to present on that later. And then uh, we had uh, uh, three marvelous days of discussions among uh, African colleagues um, uh, on the African IGF. Next, please. In terms of participation, we had uh, 314 participants from uh, 37 countries. Next, please. Uh, as you can see, gender balance was fairly good. Um, so 57% uh, males, 43 uh, females. Next time, I hope 50-50. Uh, next, please. Um, in terms of uh, stakeholder participation, was also fairly um, uh, well distributed, as you can see. I'm, I'm going to go very quickly so everyone has the time to present as well. Um, uh, there were the, the main theme of uh, next, please. The main theme of the of the. Um, uh, program was enabling an inclusive digital transformation uh, of Africa. Um, we had 13 main sessions and eight parallel sessions. Main sessions were um, prepared by the uh, program committee and the parallel sessions were prepared by the different stakeholders. Next, please. Uh, we started off uh, with a session for newcomers, an induction session. Then uh, we uh, were honored to have a high-level uh, opening by Her Excellency, the Commissioner for Infrastructure of the AUC, and uh, a high-level representative of uh, the Minister of ICT Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, and it was followed with a high-level discussion that had um, um, uh, ambassadors and uh, um, ex-ministers of uh, uh, foreign affairs uh, keynote, as keynote, Dr. Alex Trigona. And then the thematic sessions were uh, uh, very diverse. There were sessions on um, internet economy, on digital transformation and uh, labor, on uh, cybersecurity uh, for development and for peace. Uh, we also had um, a very interesting session uh, on uh, new uh, technologies and emerging issues where blockchain and cloud computing were discussed. Next, please. Uh, there was also a highlight of the, the meeting was the review of the African IGF Charter, um, and we're going to come to that later, I believe, um, uh, also during the session. Uh, then a session on the various national and sub-regional initiatives. We have many of those in Africa. Um, there was also a session on uh, DNS, um, on who is and on dot Africa. Uh, then uh, on um, uh, the African Union Declaration on Internet Governance and uh, the recommendations from last year and uh, from this year, and the closing, of course. Next, please. Uh, I'm not going to go through the parallel sessions, but you can see from uh, the list how diverse they were, and they were clearly reflecting uh, the needs of uh, the African stakeholders. Next, please. Um, I think one of the major highlights was, was the um, uh, adoption of the African IGF Charter, which ensures uh, enhanced sustainability for the process, uh, but also um, many topics uh, that clearly reflect uh, what is needed for Internet governance in the region. I will state just a, a few of those. That's not the full thing. You can go to the website and read uh, the full report. It's still in draft, uh, but it will be uh, finalized soon. So um, many interesting topics uh, on e-commerce, um, uh, on engagement uh, of uh, governments, uh, uh, capacity building, of course. Next, please, uh, <coughs> on diversity of content, cybersecurity, major issues discussed, and so on and so forth. Next, please. So uh, the information is available online. You can check even photos of the event, but also, most importantly, uh, uh, the outcome document um, and all the different discussions that uh, uh, have engaged through uh, the, the, um, the days uh, of the meeting. Next, please. Um, the African IGF next year will be in Sudan. 
uh, and uh, so uh, we're very enthusiastic uh, and happy uh, to go all there. Next, please. Uh, last uh, but not least is the uh, thank you to all uh, different uh, parties that have supported to make uh, those cluster events um, a great success. So I'm really sorry to be quick, but I know we're on very uh, tight schedule, and I will maybe uh, start right away with our next speaker. So um, um, I'm, uh, let me um, um, give the floor to Mary Odoma. Uh, Mary is the chair of uh, the African IGF uh, Charter Working Group and coordinator of the West African IGF. Um, so Mary, you have the floor, please. Thank you very much. Um, you are welcome, Africa. Um, I don't know how many of us have visited the AFIGF website since the 20th of, uh, okay? You would have seen the charter on the website. Please go to the website and read about the charter. We are structured now. The African IGF is well structured now, so there's no question of uh, surprises. Um, the aspect I want to look at is the process itself. And the process is divided into annual, the annual meeting, we, we recommended a non-com that would select the, the F IGF um, multi-stakeholder that will manage the process. Yeah, yeah. And um, what the, the, the charter said that there will be a nominating committee in 4.2 of the charter. There will be a nominating committee, and 4.2.1 says composition of the non-com. The AFIGF nomina nominating committee is composed of members from AUC, the sub-regional representative, and one African regional institution. The roles and functions are there. Please, I need you to read them. And um, so, is the non-com that will now select the multi-stakeholder advisory committee that will run the affairs in conjunction or collaboration with the host country. Like we are going to Sudan, it will be them that will run that. But it's the secretariat that will announce to us. And we have said that it will happen in year, the year we announce the non-com, the non-com will announce it and select the um, advisory committee. So um, in order not to waste our time, I'll, I'll advise and I'll encourage you, please go to Africa IGF website and see the charter we have adopted. We have adopt so we are well structured now, and whatever we are doing, this will be our guiding principle. Um, I think that's where I will stop and then uh, give room to Makan to tell us more about the announcement of the non-com. I've told you the composition, their function, the role of the African IGF nominating com committee, non-com, is to appoint 10 MAG members among candidates from all African countries for a period of two years. So, and those people will work for two years and another two years and it, you, it will rotate. As much as possible, we want, to we want every, stakeholder group in Africa. I'm happy to see this number of Africans in, uh, I, in uh, IGF. This is very, very encouraging. And also it reflected in the African IGF. It, it was really encouraging, the number of people that came to Egypt. So please, we are here. Over to Makan. Over to you, sorry. To Christy. Thank you very much, um, uh, Mary. Um, I, I don't know, Makan, would you like to add on, uh, on, um, on the charter something or uh, not now? Um, well, later on. Just later on, OK. So um, our next speaker uh, will be uh, Reda Galouz. Uh, Reda Galouz is the chairperson of uh, the North uh, African uh, IGF. And mic. he, mic. oh, sorry. The mic. I have the mic on. North African oh, oh, sorry. He, yes, of course. He is the, um, uh, the chairman of the North African uh, Multi-Stakeholder uh, Advisory Group, and uh, he uh, was actually uh, behind uh, all activities of the North African IGF since it started, and it started uh, quite a while ago. So, uh, Reda, please, the floor is yours. Yes, it's working. Thank you, Christine. 
Good afternoon. Well, the, you know where is North Africa? It is still in North Africa, but uh, for the North, the North African IGF, it is composed of seven countries, uh, starting from Sudan, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, and Mauritania. These are the seven countries of the North African IGF. Uh, as you know, also we are uh, um, we have mainly four languages used in our region, and uh, also we are multicultural uh, region. Uh, the North African IGF has been created in line with the African IGF. As uh, soon as the North Afri uh, the African IGF has been created, it has been uh, the initiative has been taken in uh, 2012 in order to have the North African IGF. We have taken our time to prepare with a small group of experts to uh, prepare the um, charter, the North African IGF charter, which, uh, which has been adopted in Marrakesh in. Uh, 2016, uh, together with the designation of a NOMCOM members who took also the responsibility to designate 22 MAG members. Based on that, we have initiated the uh, preparation of the North African IGF, and we agreed to have it in uh, Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt, uh, in back to back with, uh, with uh, the African IGF. Fortunately, we have been able to cover some critical issues uh, concerning the North African region as far as internet governance is concerned. And we reached some interesting uh, uh, out outputs concerning the future of the North African IGF for the next year. We decided to continue, of course, uh, working in order to achieve our uh, our objectives, but also we decided to be to, to recommend all the seven member states to try to create their national IGFs, and we will be uh, ready to to help all the the countries if ever they they need. We decided also to extend our relations with the uh, Arab region. IG, the, the Arab IGF, and you, you know that uh, the North, Africa, North African region is between Africa and the Arab region. That's why it is quite logical to have the North African IGF to, working together with the Arab IGF as well as the African IGF. And uh, finally, we decided to have our next, uh, for the sake of continuity, to have our next uh, IGF, North African IGF meeting in Tunisia next, uh, next year. We are planning to, to start as early as possible the pre pre preparation of this event. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Reda. And um, before I turn to the next speaker, um, I will give you some heads up that we, uh, during our discussion, it will be interesting also to hear from you on any uh, national uh, or uh, sub your involvement in any national or sub-regional initiatives or also priority that you think are important for uh, the African region uh, as a whole. So um, our, our next speaker uh, will be uh, Adel Suleiman. Uh, Adel is Senior ICT Policy uh, Officer uh, at the African uh, Union. Uh, and um, I would like uh, to ask him uh, to uh, give us uh, um, his feedback on the process, on the charter, and maybe on the declaration as well. Thank you, Thank you Christine. Uh, I think before I start, I, I would like to ask uh, Manal to stand up. Manal and Hisham to stand up. And Christine. Oh, I would stand up. Yes. <laughs> uh, please give them a round of applause. I think I think they exceeded our expectation uh, in Sharm el Sheikh. They they raised the bar for everybody to come, and I think they make life difficult for Sudan to replicate. It's going to be very difficult to, to do that. So we thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's going to be a great event, and we're here to support next year if needed. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk about process structures, issues, uh, participation, hosting, budget, 
expected outcome and the way forward. Uh, with regard to participation, it's open for everybody. Uh, uh, as you could, you could see, you, you have seen the gender, we try to make it gender balanced as, as much as we can. And also among the five regions in Africa, we are trying to get representation from the five region, African region and the youth as well. There is one issue in terms of participation, people take visa, uh, you know, as something guaranteed. Uh, you know, the situation in the world is changing. Countries, before we went to Egypt, there was a terrorist attack in Egypt. And you could imagine the, the, the security situation in Egypt. People, they take it for granted. I think the experience from Addis Ababa, it was not a good experience because people, we had, they had uh, visa on arrival in Addis Ababa because the, uh, in Addis Ababa is the headquarter of the African Union Commission. So we could leverage uh, you know, our position to get visa on arrival, but this is not going to be the case moving forward. In Sudan, people, please make sure that uh, you, this visa issue is taken care of because uh, we have situation where we issued a uh, ticket to participants, but then they told us later on that they didn't have visa. So please make sure that your visa situation, you know, given the, situa that the, the security situation in the world is taken care of before, uh, before uh, speaking to us. With regard to hosting, this has been a, a, a huge issue for us, hosting, because the process is very long. It takes a long time to finalize the arrangement with the host country. And this is why maybe also are facing the visa issues, because once we announce it, it's, it's a one month or one month and a half before the event. And uh, we are learning from this experience, and now we have Sudan ahead of time, everybody knows that the next meeting is going to be in Sudan. So please take care of your visas and at least make sure that you have everything in place. What is that? The dates, yeah. The dates, we, have, we, we haven't yet set, set up the dates. We are, we are speaking with Sudan. Most likely it's going to be between June and September. We are trying to make it early this time around, just to make sure that we have it way be before the, the IGF, because you know the last one is almost two weeks before IGF, it was difficult. Uh, with regard to uh, budget, in terms of budget, I think we, AU has very limited budget. So we encourage people through your institutions to get sponsorship. And please let us know, because once you are a sponsor, this is the place for somebody else who could not afford to, be uh, to travel on their own, to, to have AU sponsor them. We have very limited budget, as I said. You can also go to, go to, the, your, uh, to the organization like UNESCO, ISOC. I think they were helping us. I can, they were helping us. We don't need money from this organization. As long as they could sponsor people, tickets, and their accommodation, we are happy. Because the AU rules in terms of uh, receiving money is very complicated. So we prefer that you speak to your institution, uh, get a sponsorship, or get a sponsorship through international organization, and let us know, because we are going to remove your name from the list and then include somebody who else who could not afford to be in the meeting. Uh, with, in terms of uh, uh, the uh, outcome, expected outcome, we had uh, a very interesting discussion in, in uh, Sharm el Sheikh about outcomes, you know. What are the scenarios? You know, should we just get, get uh, some recommendations and then just let the communities take this recommendation and try to implement it somehow, the government, civil society, and so forth? Or what, what can we do? Like, you know, have uh, very few items, we focus on those items, and then we kind of deep dive on those items and get very relevant, uh, very strong recommendation. So, or we follow like the, the IETF uh, path, like you know, you have a working group working, like for instance, from Sudan to the next one, and then on the subject, and then come up with uh, a paper on that. So, of course, we don't we just we. This is just a, an item for discussion, and uh, because we wanted to have something tangible coming out of the African IGF, uh, you know. Uh, Christian spoke about the outcomes. 
you know, the charter, and we have also the AU Declaration on Internet Governance. I think this is a true example of multi-stakeholders in action. We started this uh, draft declaration in Addis Ababa, if you all remember. It was a, a one-page document, and I think now it's uh, almost 20 page, uh, around, it's a big document now, 42 items on the declaration. Uh, this is a multi-stakeholder because it started from the community, it went all the way up to the decision maker and the policy maker. Uh, in last month, the African Minister of ICT adopted the document. And we are very proud because it's a bottom-up document. And then I think we all deserve a round of applause. Way forward, way forward, we would like, as we said, we have Sudan coming up in 2018. We would like to have uh, Central Africa or Francophonie for 2019. I don't know if somebody is going to raise their hand and say, okay, 2019 is going to be on us. So we'd like to finalize that, this one, and announce it hopefully in Sudan, the next host. I'm hearing Benin, Sierra Leone, they're interested, so please, uh, Okay, so maybe you can give the floor later on to speak about that. Uh, finally, uh, just uh, on the way forward, uh, we, I think some of you who have been in uh, Sharm el Sheikh, we already know the news. We have this program, on a, a massive program of capacity building in Africa. It's called PRIDA, which is Policy and Regulation Initiative for Digital Africa. Uh, it's a joint, uh, uh, cooperation between African Union Commission and the European Commission. It's uh, 2.5 uh, million euros for capacity building over three years period. Uh, we already started talking to the different community so that the civil society and, and, and other, other communities so that they can help us, uh, you know, implementing this uh, PIC program. Uh, it's, they intend this to not only is a one-time thing, we'll tend to have uh, sustainability for the capacity building in the countries. And we can, we can have discussion maybe offline if you want to learn more about the program. I think I've taken a long time. I'll stop at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we're uh, great on time. Um, <laughs> please, thank you. Thank you, Ayad. Okay, um, I will uh, give the floor uh, to McCain now. Uh, thank you, Christine. Uh, uh, Michel Chon and Lidze was supposed to speak uh, about the Central African process, but unfortunately he has left earlier. He has given his note, which will be reflected in the report. Now, uh, I have to. Oh, I have to stand them. Um, I want, would like to say that um, uh, uh, Michael Lindsay from Cameroon, uh, uh, coordinator of CAPDA, was supposed to make a presentation on the last Central African uh, uh, IGF, which was held uh, in uh, Brazzaville, Congo, but uh, he has left, but he left him with his note. The note will be reflected in the report. He just gave uh, uh, strong points and weak points and uh, some more recommendation for the way forward. Now I would like, uh, in line with uh, what was announced by Mary on the African IGF Charter, you know, uh, it is clearly written that uh, uh, in line with Article 4.21 of the African IGF Charter, which states the African IGF Nominating Committee is composed of members from the African Union Commission, the sub-regional representatives, and one African regional institution. The sub-regional representatives, it doesn't mean that it's the regional economic communities. It means stakeholder groups from a particular sub-region. Because not all the RECs are uh, engaged in, Afri in IGF. Where the RECs are engaged in IGF, the RECs will be nominated as uh, members. So uh, we have uh, only two uh, RECs which are fully engaged in uh, the IGF process, that is West Africa and Southern Africa. 
all the other sub-regions, there are stakeholder groups which are organizing and convening. So those stakeholder groups which are engaged and convening will be members of the uh, nominating committee. Uh, and in line with Article 4.42a, uh, subsection 5, the Secretariat announces the nominating committee members during odd year sessions, and this is the odd year. So we have to make the nomination before the end of December, otherwise we have to nominate them in two years' time, while the uh, MAC members have to be nominated in even years, that means in Sudan, Khartoum will nominate the MAC members. Now, the, there are processes for uh, nominating the MAC members. After the nominating committee uh, is announced from January, we will ask, send a call out for uh, nomination for the MAC members. The MAC members are supposed to be 15 MAC members. The nominating committee members are uh, supposed to be uh, seven. You have the African Union, Mokhtar Yedali, West Africa, Kofi Raphael, uh, which is in, from ECOWAS, Southern Africa, George Ate from uh, SADEC, East Africa, Lilian Nalwoga from Uganda, North Africa, the convener of the, the chair of the uh, North African MAG, Rida Gelouz, Central Africa, the last uh, organizer of the Central African IGF, Luke Misidimbazi from uh, Congo, and for the international organization, the AUC he will hold a consultation for the designation of uh, the representative of IGOs. But please note that all the international organizations, African international organization, private sector operating in Africa, are expected to be part of the African IGF MAG. Nobody is, is excluded. But also in uh, creating the MAG, all the stakeholder group should be taken care of. If we have, for example, uh, uh, one uh, uh, government organization in here, we need to have civil society or academia or so on. So this has to be reflected in the nomination. So please note that not everybody who is going to be nominated will be accepted, but because we need to take care of the balance. As you have seen, Christine has shown the balance here. Many uh, IGF processes, governments are behind. And someone from uh, Sierra Leone said today that government is behind. Here, government was ta has taken the lead. They are more than the other part of the, the stakeholder groups. And women also is coming to approach the uh, male. So in this nomination, the MAC also, we need to have a balance or at least a near balance between male and women. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, McCain. And uh, maybe I didn't uh, properly introduce McCain, but maybe because I always understand that everyone knows McCain. <laughs> so, and I, I would like us, yes, I, I, so, so McCain, um, I really would like to thank you for, uh, for your efforts uh, to make the African uh, uh, IGF this year uh, such a success together uh, with Adil. Uh, uh, but uh, I will just tell you a secret. Uh, I have known McCain since the first African, uh, since the first global IGF, when we organized together Africa on the road to Athens in 2006. So yeah, uh, it's history. <laughs> so okay, I promised we could have uh, 20 minutes uh, discussions and uh, I think we're good on time. Uh, I would like uh, now to open up uh, the floor uh, for discussion. I think, um, yeah, sorry? Ah, okay. We should start maybe with remote participation. Yeah. Okay, I will give the floor to Aisha, please, our remote uh, Thank participation. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Is it here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. As far as questions are concerned, we have two questions. Yeah, we have two questions. So the first, do the statistics of the African participation in the IGF include remote participants? That's the first question. And the second question, has the North African IGF Charter been cross-checked to ensure that there is no contradiction to African IGF Charter. Thank you. This is a, a good question. Maybe I can uh, start with the North African part and give to Reda the floor to respond. Thank you for the question. In reality, I have to, to tell the truth on this. Usually I don't tell the truth, but here I, <laughs> I have to, to say. In fact, I am a member of the drafting group of the African IGF Charter. But I started the exercise with uh, some other people 
uh, concerning the North African Charter. So, in fact, most of the ideas that were in the North African Charter, as it has been adopted uh, in, in Marrakesh, are also in the African uh, Charter, African IGF Charter, except, except the issue of NOMCOM, which has not yet been adopted at the North African level. So we have still to work on the issue of North African, and I hope that the next meeting will be an opportunity to adopt the, the provision related to the NOMCOM of the North African uh, Charter. Is it clear? Yes, thank you very, uh, very much, uh, Reda. And let me, let me add maybe to that that uh, it's uh, fairly new. I mean, it's the first annual meeting, despite the fact that there are very ma many efforts for that. So I think there is plenty of, uh, um, of uh, improvements uh, to be done, and it's actually a good idea to, to compare the charters um, uh, to the charter of uh, the African IGF. That to, would be um, a good thing to do. Um, I, on, the, uh, on the first question, if I recall right, it was statistics about remote participation. And uh, frankly, I don't have statistics, but I don't know if uh, Hisham has any statistics and would like to intervene? Please. Um, thank you, Christine, and um, thank you, Adel. Uh, for, for remote participation, let me start with um, uh, stressing how important that component was in our preparations for the, this year's uh, African IGF. We understand the limitations that sometimes uh, people cannot travel to, uh, to meeting venues, so we have worked on having this in all sessions, including parallel sessions and workshops. Um, in, in terms of uh, numbers, the, the number of remote participants is included within the number that uh, have been presented. Um, we have worked hard to, to make this uh, uh, as workable as possible, and we have also the sessions recorded and available on the website of the African uh, IGF, so that still uh, anyone can tap into this material and make use of it. Yes, thank you, Hisham, and I have to say that um, uh, we learn as we go, and it's probably an experience that uh, each host of the, Af of the uh, African IGF maybe should give to the next host. Uh, so uh, the remote participation, one issue that we were looking at is having various channels with various languages, so French and English, so remote participants uh, 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 could be there. So uh, yeah, it was an issue that, uh, that we were working on. So I, I uh, would like to open up the floor now um, if someone has a question. Let me. Let me take and then I'll come back to the floor. Please, I, I would kindly ask you to introduce yourself briefly before stating your question. Uh, t thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Maktar Sek from UNCA. I just have uh, one uh, question. Because in the MAC uh, IGF uh, and also the nominate com committee, I didn't see the name of UNCA. And could you clarify why? because the uh, secretary is sitting by ECA and AUC. Just we transfer the secretary to AUC. I want to, to get more clarification why UN ECA is shifted. Okay, M maybe, we can have, maybe we can have a couple of questions and then respond. So I, I could take another question if someone, please, please. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Ufa Modi. I'm an ISOC Utah IGF fellow. Um, I would just like to find out what are the procedures being put in place by Africa IGF to include more African youth in internet governance processes and also to educate them more and to include them in policy making procedures. And also what is the support being given to youth who are willing to be more involved in IG in Africa? Thank you. Thank you very much. An important question about youth participation. I'll take two more questions and then I'll revert back to the floor. Can I take one from the right and then maybe one from the middle? Merci, madame. Je vais parler en français. S'il vous plaît. Uh, J'ai une question et une remarque. Uh, je je m'appelle Serge Parfait Goma. Je viens de la République du Congo et je suis membre du chapitre local de ISOC. C'est ma première fois de participer à IDF Global. La question que je me pose, euh, IDF fait la promotion de la diversité, surtout la diversité de langues. Mais à ma grande surprise, 
euh, ici à, à, à Genève, on a eu une seule salle avec euh, droit à la traduction et toutes les autres sessions se, se sont passées en anglais. Vous pouvez comprendre euh, combien on a mis à, de côté euh, certains qui pouvaient bien participer aux travaux mais qui ne pouvaient pas le faire. Et ma deuxième remarque, c'est dans la difficulté de, de venir ici à Genève. Parce qu'on a eu beaucoup de collègues qui ont fait beaucoup de travaux en amont, qui ont bien souhaité venir ici à Genève, mais qui n'ont pas pu euh, être là pour des raisons de visa. Alors, quel peut être l'appui de, de l'Union africaine pour ces questions euh, où on se sent un peu exclu des discussions que, que, que l'on doit avoir et ma toute dernière question, c'est l'accompagnement de, de, de l'Union africaine sur la mise en place de, des initiatives IDF en local. Merci beaucoup. Merci, monsieur. Uh, one uh, last question. Thank you. I have two kinds of questions. The first is practically for the meeting in Sudan. Once the dates have not been fixed, it becomes impossible to make visa applications. It also is impossible to book air tickets. So we need those dates as fast as possible. Uh, otherwise, it will be worse than what my colleague just described for Geneva. It will be a very small meeting because nobody will have been able to do the processing. The next set of questions is more to do with what happened at this IGF. Um, I participated in a number of uh, sessions and I observed that the panels had representation from Asia, they had representation from Latin America, but only in a few cases did we see anybody on the panel who was representing uh, the situation in Africa. And uh, especially for dynamic coalition, which is supposed to be a dynamic coalition, I would have expected that there would have been a better Africa representation in terms of the preparation of certain themes. I think that it's very important at the level of the Africa IGF that we are clear on which areas are our priorities. That is the purpose for me of the Africa IGF that we are clear on what is important for Africa. So I'll be grateful if you, you mentioned e-commerce, but if you mention you know, some of the other things, and then as we prepare for 2018, what are the themes that we will be actually deep diving into so that when we get to the meeting, we have very substantive discussions around. So I think that we need to get back to the substance. Thank you. I forgot, my name is Dorothy Gordon, and I work in the area of technology and development. Thank you very much for your intervention. Um, okay, let me maybe start um, uh, with the question on uh, the Secretariat and the East. Yes, I will take another round of questions after we answer those. So, um, Mary, would you like to come on yeah, this? Yeah, I, I want to uh, respond to Mac Magta. Magda's question from ECE. If you go to 4.4.1, hosting of AFIGF Secretariat, the AFIGF Secretariat shall be composed of a lean setup, uh, comprising of coordinator, desk officer, and seasonal uh, volunteers, including interns and fellows. B, the AFIGF Secretariat is hosted by the African Union Commission and supported by the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa in accordance with the joint AUC and ECA communique on the Secretariat of the uh, Africa IGF dated 3rd September 2014. It is physically located at AUC quarters in Addis Ababa. So by default, ECA is already a member. Thank you, Mary. Do, does it does it clear the point? Thank you, Mary. Um, I think uh, Reda would like to add, please. Yes, please. Thank you, Christine. I think we have to insist on the role, central role of uh, what should be called now on umbrella organizations. In the case of uh, 
of uh, the African IGF, it is clear it is the, both the ECA, ECA, ECA and the AUC in an arrangement which has been established between them since uh, 2015, I think. Now, uh, uh, I have to bring some clarifications as for the uh, NOMCOM, the impossibility of uh, creating officially a NOMCOM in uh, the North African region, it is because we have no umbrella organization, to be clear. Uh, you know that uh, half of the North African countries belong to what we call UMA, uh, the, the uh, uh, Maghreb Union, and uh, the two other countries do not belong to UMA. So it is hard to find a way to get an umbrella organization w which would have been very helpful in the issue in, in establishing a clear rule uh, concerning the, the NOMCOM. So hopefully, as for uh, uh, the African IGF, there was already consensus on the umbrella organization. Thank you. Thank you, Reda. Um, Adel, would you like to come on the other questions, please? Yeah, le let me take a shot at the questions. I think there was a question on youth participation. And I think uh, for us, I think in the Secretariat, we think that youth are key in the African IGF. And there are a couple of opportunities for youth to participate. Uh, there is a school taking place before, usually before the IGF, and the graduates from the school, youth, of course, they will participate in the African IGF. This is one avenue. Second avenue, I think we also, uh, we started in, uh, in Durban. Uh, we thought if we have a youth session in the plenary, that would be, uh, you know, it, it adequate. But we realized that after the session, then the youth, they said, we don't have anything to do after that. So what we try to do in Sharm el and moving forward, to include youth participant in, you know, practically each and every session so that they can have their voice heard during the sessions. And uh, we also, when we select people from the five region, we always have a youth element in that. The only limitation for us is just the budget. But, uh, you know, Youth are the future, of course, and then they have to be included in the discussion. Uh, there was a question on uh, Sudan. Uh, Sudan, I think we, we already started the, the, the discussion with Sudan on the dates. And hopefully within Q1, we would be able to announce the dates. So this is something we are taking into account. And it's, it's important because of the, the, the situation of visas that we faced with before. So uh, rest assured that I think hopefully within Q1 we'll announce the date. Even if we learn it sooner, we will announce it. So this is very important for us because it will help us also with the organization. On the question uh, pertaining to the panel uh, during IGF, uh, I think there was a high level meeting between the head of uh, the chairperson of the African Union Commission the uh, ECA and the African Development Bank. And then they stress the same point that you, you mentioned, that the African participation is uh, non-existent in this uh, international dialogues. And uh, that's why we, 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 we work with the European Commission to come up with this uh, capacity building initiative for Africans uh, as a step to have them ready to participate in, uh, actively participate in this global discussion. So this is point well taken. I think we, we, were in, uh, uh, we already have some effort. Uh, we are putting some effort and activities towards making this happen to have African participating in the global discussion. On the themes, uh, the issue on the themes, I, I think maybe you are not in our uh, list. Usually the way we, uh, we go about uh, selecting the themes, uh, we invite the community uh, we throw like five themes and we invite the community to include additional themes and then we have voting uh, on the theme. And we are trying to move away from the global themes. So we're trying to address African's issues and uh, you know, the issue pertaining to Africa and, and, and then as much as possible trying to walk away from the uh, global themes. I think, I, yeah, with that, I think maybe I yield back, I yield to So, McKean, and uh, 
Yeah. Yes, okay. in line with what Adil has said, uh, uh, we are setting up an online platform, a forum, and I hope all of your uh, ad email addresses are here. If you don't have it, please uh, add it here. Right? The paper is here. If you don't have it, please come and uh, add your email address, please. Uh, because uh, as Adil has said, the teams were uh, built from uh, bottom up. It was sent to all the people who have their email addresses. So they, there was some suggestion from various groups, including youth. So it was uh, very inclusive. Uh, now on the question raised by uh, our colleague Parfait, uh, well, uh, uh, it is the uh, IGF, you know, we, uh, there, there are only some sessions which are uh, uh, used multilingually, and those are the main sessions. So any other session can be uh, in French, English, or whatever languages, in case the group which are organizing it have uh, uh, secured interpretation. We did it uh, in, in some of the IGFs because we had uh, uh, pro 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 provision for this, but this last year we had very few uh, number in the African Open Forum. So if you, were, if you knew that you have this uh, large number, then we would have catered for interpretation because you don't want to waste the money. Last year we had maximum 10 person in our room. This year we have almost 100 people. So if this is a trend, then we can move forward for it. For the visa issues also, as Adil has said earlier, this is a global problem. And uh, uh, Adil, I think there is a one issue which was raised by one participant who was in Sudan in May this year. And when he was exiting, they asked him to pay a lot of uh, dollars for uh, exit visa. Sudan? Yes. Okay. Yes, please. He told me clearly during the post break, the break that we should really yeah. test report, for that. that. Yes. So we are going to take care of that, I'm sure. So, thank you. Uh, um, um, I just want to, sorry, I, I, we need to have a couple of more questions before we close, and we don't have much time. So uh, we have a remote question. Have, so please, excuse remote me. Question. Yes. We yeah. have first a remote question, please. Yes, we have a remote question coming from, sorry. Yeah, yeah we have a remote question qu coming from Nana to Adil uh, about uh, funding and sponsoring. So her question is, is the AUC going to pre-select participants to support or leave it to the sponsoring organizations? Okay, and I, I have a gentleman here at the back. No? Okay. So sorry, I, I had someone here from the beginning. Yes, please, go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. My name is James Nolufuye. I really want to use the opportunity to commend the team up there for the work done. We have made tremendous progress. I remember when we started six years ago or, ago or thereabout. Uh, now we have all the regions in Africa coming, having uh, activity on uh, internet governance. My question is, is this, um, how many national IGF do we have right now ongoing out of the 54 countries in Africa? Just a way of the measure of progress. Thank you. Oh, I can't have everyone, I'm really sorry. I had someone here at the store. <laughs> Please. Uh, Mike, please. Hello. My name is Kosia Mesunwa from Benin, IGF. Just to know why we put on the chapter, we, we, we say here, formal MAG members are eligible for reappointed after two years. Why? Okay. And uh, please, Misham also goes here. Merci, Madame Chair. Je m'appelle Sissé Khan. Euh, um, je représente la Société civile africaine sur la Société de l'information. Euh, je voulais féliciter l'équipe euh, pour le travail. Je pense que, comme quelqu'un l'a dit ici, l'Afrique euh, est, est vraiment larguée dans cette histoire d'Internet et de nouvelles technologies. Nous avons tous commencé ensemble il y a 25 ans. Il y en a qui ont maintenant 80% de connexion. Et en Afrique, on a des pays qui en sont à 3%. Donc il y a beaucoup de travail et donc euh, je pense que ce serait bien euh, d'appuyer de, 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 vraiment sur la formation parce que c'est ça qui va amener les, les Africains à, à relever le défi. Et donc la société civile africaine aussi est très fière de participer à tous les IGF et elle se tient à votre disposition surtout pour former les jeunes euh, à travers nos organisations membres, plus de 600 à travers le continent. Et je vois aussi qu'il n'y a que quelques euh, régions qui sont dedans. Est-ce que 
Pourquoi il n'y a pas toutes les régions, les, les, les autres qui organisent les, les IGF Pourquoi il n'y a pas à l'Afrique de l'Est et tout ça dans, Ce serait bien d'aller vers ça. Et aussi, est-ce que vous pouvez aussi nous parler d'autres Africa euh, Nous, on aimerait bien, par exemple, migrer vers d'autres Africa pour que nous ayons notre, notre domaine à nous. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous en parler un peu Merci beaucoup. Merci. Alors, um, I'm going to have three more questions. I'm very sorry to everyone who wanted to ask. I'm going to have one at the back, one here, and one over there. Please. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Imran Ahmed. Uh, I am from uh, Isaac Chat. Uh, I need to to do my question by French. Uh, ma question est en français. Oui, uh, vous elle elle s'adresse uh, vraiment ici à l'Union africaine. Qu'est-ce que l'Union africaine fait uh, à travers uh, les différentes institutions qu'elle a et qu'elle n'arrive pas vraiment à imposer à nos gouvernements africains de, 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 sur la gouvernance de, de, de l'Internet et surtout la censure. la censure. Si on ferme, si on peut former vraiment de, de meilleurs ingénieurs, de meilleurs techniciens et que l'Internet restera toujours censuré, quelle serait vraiment son, son importance Donc, Maintenant, nous, on demande ici à l'Union africaine de faire et de peser de tout son poids sur nos différents gouvernements, enfin vraiment que euh, la censure doit être levée et surtout le coût et la qualité d'accessibilité. Je vous remercie. Merci, monsieur. So, I'm, two last questions, please, Hichem and uh, Mr. Tijani. Uh, th thank you, Madam Chair. And, uh, Mike, please. I think it's on. So, um, uh, first, I, I, I want to start by, by thanking everyone in the EUC for having worked us uh, through the, the last months of preparations, and I wish to commend everyone from the EUC team for helping us uh, hosting the event this year. Coming to the discussion that we had in the last uh, 10 minutes, I, I want to thank uh, the lady here for highlighting the African representation issue at the global level. And here I, I have a, uh, one, uh, one, note, one note and maybe uh, uh, another observation. The, for the intersessional work that uh, goes through the year at the global IGF level, I think there's some effort that is needed to include more African voices in the intersessional work itself. So by the time we come to the global event, we still find uh, experts from Africa because we, we don't lack expertise, but maybe the engagement is the issue. And here I have uh, a suggestion also to make more visible the mailing list that uh, I think McCain and Adel pointed out, to make it more visible and make it more dynamic. Uh, we can maybe uh, rely on the effort uh, of uh, McCain and Adil to, to link uh, this community, the African IGF community, to the global one during the months of preparation uh, in the intersessional work by the global IGF. Uh, second point, very quickly, the training. I wish to commend the African Union for taking this step to, uh, to put this budget for the capacity building. Uh, it is very important that we don't have this separate of the African IGF processes. So if we are attending to the intersessional part, that we have this capacity building designed around intersessional activities across the, the uh, continent, and to also make use of the expertise inside Africa to, to, uh, to utilize this in the capacity building program. Thank you very Thank much. You. Last question, please. Thank you, um, Christine. It is not a question. Dijani speaking. Dijani Benjamin. Uh, I would like to speak French, but uh, since there is no uh, interpretation, let's speak uh, English. Uh, uh, is uh, uh, just to tell those who were disappointed that there are there are not Africans on the stage speaking on those sessions. Tomorrow there will be two sessions where we will have Africans speaking on the stage. The first one is at nine o'clock. It is uh, uh, the UNESCO Forum number sixty-six, and I will sp I will be speaking about the protection of data. The second one will be at 11.50, uh, and it will be the Afra Law uh, workshop, and uh, it will be in room uh, 17E, uh, and uh, it, uh, there will be African speaking, and I will be moderating it. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we will, I will give one minute, please, to every panelist to respond to the questions and maybe give their closing remarks because we don't have much time left. So I will start um, uh, at uh, McCain, please. Uh, Thank you, Christine. Uh, just trying to 
reflect on uh, 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 the number requested by uh, Jimson. Uh, we don't have the exact number. We'll uh, uh, make the inventory and put it on the website because uh, even last week there was one uh, national IGF which was organized in uh, DRC. Uh, we have around 25 national IGFs uh, going on in Africa and we would like to have more. For COSI is talking about the reappointment after two years. That means we don't want uh, people to be in the MAG, uh, African IGF MAG member throughout. So we say that uh, after uh, you finish your mandate, you can uh, rest for two years and then you apply again. If uh, you are uh, uh, found suitable again, then you may be reappointed. Tu as compris? Tu sors pour deux ans. Après, si tu es possible, mais on ne veut pas laisser les gens compter parce qu'il y a d'autres personnes qui peuvent aussi être membres. C'est le roulement. On fait rouler les gens, c'est ça. Bah, si, si la personne est capable de revenir, elle revient. Il n'y a pas de problème. Euh, on a euh, si c'est on, on dot Africa, I think uh, um, uh, what is his name? Adil will speak about it. But uh, we are going to uh, move the afigf.org to afigf.africa very soon. We have requested Afrini to do it, so that will be an example uh, to move forward. Yes. <laughs> uh, for uh, Imran, uh, well, uh, it is about internet shutdown, the cost of access, and so on. Adil will uh, speak about it. Uh, Isham also made a note on what was requested by our colleague from Ghana. In fact, seeing a lot of people in the Dear Dynamic Coalition, what Isham said is, is true. The work of the Dear Dynamic Coalition starts 12 months ago, you know, and it is at the end just that people are coming to sit and present. We used to be part of the Dynamic Coalition. I used to be part of several, many of our colleagues used to be. But sometimes when we finish our work, we stop or we are tired, we let other people to go in. So you have to start early. And we will be uh, trying to establish this platform to link it with the, Africa, with the global IGF. ISOC will help us set it and uh, we'll move forward. We believe that everybody will be in the list. We'll have forums online and uh, which will be very interactive to make sure that everybody uh, goes in. Thank you. Thank you, McKean. Geda, your uh, response. Uh, thank you very much. So, sorry, may I go, okay. I'll go right. one uh, right and left. Geda, please. Thank you, Christine. Thank you very much. In fact, uh, I, I would like to talk much more on challenges, new challenges of Africa as far as the IGF is concerned. Now we have an African IGF. We have five uh, sub-regional IGFs. The missing point or the missing component is still 25 on over 54 is not enough. I think our most important challenge for the future is to have 54 national IGF. This is the, the main issue as far as bottom-up processes are concerned. If we want to have Africa heard at the, 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 the global level, we have to start hearing or listening to people at the local level. So please, if uh, next year we are, uh, let's say, 54 uh, national IGFs, it will be a success. Otherwise, we will have to continue. Thank you. Thank you, Reda. We'll work hard. Mary, please. Um, I want to say that many people in this room participated at the discourse. I know Jimson had a lot of participation. I featured in not less than six discourse. So if where you went to, you didn't see Africans, there are some other ones. There are over 80 workshops. You cannot confirm. So if you look at the part, if you look through all of them, one after the other, the trade, the, the, uh, trade and uh, investment, the, the data problem, Cybersecurity, one of us organized the main session yeah. for cybersecurity, I mean, for peace and development. Uh, Jameson partici participated as well. As we have said, if you don't engage during the intercession, intercession you will not. Uh, we, we were all in, uh, in, the, in the, even Kosi was in the, in the, in the uh, 
uh, what's it called, the NRIs. We had eight NRIs, and so many of them participated. So it's not only, uh, let's not shoot ourselves down. We are trying, but let's try more. And uh, in the next, with, within the year, I think what we'll do is to establish those working groups, since we have so support from uh, uh, the, the African Union. So I encourage you to be part of the discourse during the year, intersectionally. Then they will give you the, pro uh, the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Mary. Thank you, Mary, very much. And a very valid point. I confirm that uh, during the process, African colleagues that were uh, represented on the MAG have had a very, very important contribution to the, to the program. And sure. maybe one idea is to ask uh, the Secretariat for st statistics about speakers, about workshop organizers from the African region, about, uh, so that we can, uh, we can build on that. So uh, I'll give the final intervention to Adel Adel, please. Thank you, Christine. I think there was an online question on support. Uh, 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 funding for uh, participants. Uh, I think ideally we want to fund everybody, <laughs> but then we have limited budget. <laughs> because of the limited budget, then we have to prioritize. Uh, uh, those who are going to be involved in the sessions, I think we give them priorities, whether it's uh, uh, youth session or prayer sessions, so we give them priority, and then we try, as I said, to be diverse in terms of regions and uh, to select the active participants. Uh, in addition to that, we also include new blood. We try to include new blood so that they, you know, we don't have the same people over and over again. Uh, I hope that is uh, satisfactory for the person online. Uh, on the question on the national IGF, I think that's why we have this uh, initiative, PREDA initiative, so that uh, one of the objectives of PREDA initiative is to increase the number of uh, national IGFs in Africa and increase the participation of African in the global debate. So hopefully, uh, as we go, we improve the number. Uh, on the, uh, I think there was a question about shutdowns. Internet I think, shutdown, chat. Yeah, internet shutdown from chat. I think this is, uh, I think this is a very good case point where the, the uh, multi-stakeholders uh, can contribute uh, as uh, you know technical solution or policy solution to the uh, to the countries who are set shutting down the internet. I think uh, with in talking to the countries, I think this is the only thing they know. So we have to educate them. I, I, I'm thinking like this in the internet shutdown could be one of our uh, you know uh, sessions uh, next year. So yes. so that we can come up with solutions. Yes. Because I'm very sure that if the countries, they know that uh, another way around it, they wouldn't have shut it because they have uh, economic consequences. So, so this is something that as a, as a community, we can sit together and then come up with something. Uh, the policy proposal or, or whatever, some kind of proposal to the countries, alternatives, give them some alternatives. Uh, on North Africa. Uh, on North Africa, I think we have, uh, so far we have 11,000 uh, registrations for under Africa. Uh, this represents 75 percent of our target. Uh, and unfortunately, most of them are international, and that's why we are asking you to uh, buy the African domain name, please, and encourage uh, the communities that you are working with to also buy the African domain names. In the African Union Commission, we are moving everything. Uh, into instead of .org, we are moving into .africa. So we are taking the lead on that, but uh, we uh, really encouraging you to buy .africa domain name because this is, you know, th this is Africa identity. We will need to preserve our identity just to make sure that uh, we reserve our culture, you know, all these uh, good things about .africa. So please, please, please buy .africa domain name. Thank you. I, I would like to thank you all for being with us uh, beyond time, and I apologize to everyone who had a question, but it's an opportunity to engage in the mailing list that uh, McKinnon and Adel are promising, so please do send your questions over the mailing list. Thank you, everyone, and join me in thanking all our panelists today. Thank you. 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 Thank you.